everyone, it's Meg and today I'm going to be talking about some books that I have read recently. So it's actually been quite a while since I have filmed a sit down video, probably October maybe was maybe the last time I sat down and did a video like this so bear with me throughout this video there may be a lot of like clips like mushed together and all that sort of thing but we're going to get back into it. And I have a lot of books to talk to you guys about today. I have 15 books. So these are books basically that I read kind of the end of summer and throughout autumn. And it seems like a lot of books, but I have definitely been reading a lot slower um, this year in general. I'm not going to go too in depth with these books because like I said, I've got loads of them. So I don't want to ramble on too much. And I do have specific vlogs for certain books that I'm going to talk about. So if I have any of those, I'll leave them in the description if you kind of want to hear more of my expanded thoughts on any of these books. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, let's just get straight in on to the video. So like I said, some of these books I read during the end of summer, so you will have to bear with me because it's been quite a while since I have read them. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. This is a book that I've had on my TBR for well over a year, so I finally read it back in August. And uh, this is basically about our main character, Queenie, who is a black woman living in London. She is in her mid-twenties and I don't seem to read many books that are about women specifically in the age category that I am, which is like mid-twenties. Uh, maybe it's just personally the books that I read. Um, but So it's really nice to kind of hit, read about somebody who has a who is in like a similar life position to me and it's basically about Queenie's life and it basically starts about where her and her boyfriend go on a break and Queenie is basically going through the role, like the grief and kind of the emotions of dealing with this. There is a lot of self-sabotage in it and she's just, her life is just a little bit all over the place and she has many issues going on outside of this relationship that is falling apart. So it's very much about her trying to read discover herself and obviously making a lot of mistakes along the way. Queenie is definitely not a perfect character and she's not always the most likeable but I guess you appreciate her for that because she's very imperfect and she's very flawed um, and you really get to see her grow so much in this as well which I really love. There are quite a few trigger warnings for this book as well so just make sure you check that out before going into it but a really great read that discusses mental health specifically in the black community. It also discusses sex and uh, relationships and there's also some great discussions on race and racism as well and friendship and a bunch of other stuff so I really enjoyed this book. A very easy writing style as well and I love kind of like the dark humour in this as well. So a really great read and highly recommend it. I know this is quite a popular book at least in the UK but if you have not picked this book up I do definitely recommend it. It was a really fun but also very important and insightful read at the same time. The next book I'm going to talk about is Reputation by Lex Croucher and this was a book I randomly came across when I was just browsing the Waterstones website. I saw it, I read the blurb, it sounded great and I managed to get myself a signed copy in my local Waterstones. So I started reading this when I was on holiday at the end of August and this is set in kind of the Georgian era and it is about our main character Georgiana who basically is staying with her aunt and uncle and she meets the Francis Campbell who is a very rich and wealthy woman who obviously lives with her parents. They're probably, I guess, maybe in their late teens, early twenties in this novel and it's basically about meeting Francis' group and she basically the life that Francis lives and it's very luxurious and scandalous and it's kind of like Gossip Girl meets Bridgerton and it was a very fun read. This again was a book that I started reading and you're always going to love. I love the humour in this. I think it is brilliant. Some of the descriptions are amazing and the characters are really good as well and this book starts out being all very fun and kind of just like 
kind of like Gossip Girl, like scandalous and fun and all that sort of thing. But on this second half of the book, it definitely has more of a punch. It definitely talks about some topics that are very taboo in this time, such as like sexual assault and rape. So obviously be aware of that before going into this book. And also women speaking out about it was something that wasn't really happening at that time. So it talks about that as well and some other stuff and it's just a really fun read. I think if you love Bridgerton or kind of any like Georgian era dramas you will love this and it does have hints of Jane Austen as well and I really love the writing style in this. It's very easy but I feel like it's also very well written and very suited to the time period that Lex is writing in. It feels very kind of classical but also very modern and easy to read which I really really love so Again, if you are a historical fiction fan, if you want to even get into historical fiction, I think this is a great book. It's just so much fun, but like I said, does definitely tackle some more important topics in it as well. Maybe check out some of the trigger warnings just in case you want to get into this book, but such a fun, rompy historical fiction read. And Lex has another book coming out in 2023, which I'm very much looking forward to reading about, which is set in the medieval times I believe which would be fun so do definitely recommend this if you're looking for a new historical fiction read. Next up we have The Island Home by Libby Page and this was one of my most anticipated releases of the year and I read this a little bit in one of my vlogs a couple of months ago and then I finished it when I was on holiday and this book did not disappoint. I've heard a few mixed things about this book going in because I've loved Libby's other books and then my mum read it and then my friend Em read it, Em loved it, my mum really enjoyed it but said it was a bit long winded which I've heard a few other people talk about. However, I just, once I got into this book it took me maybe a couple of chapters to like fully get into it but once I got in, I was in and it was just one of those books where I could not stop reading it. Like I never got bored, like usually with quite a few books I have to kind of have enough of reading so I have to kind of put the book down and go do something else before I come back to it but this book I could have read it like all day for however long it took me to finish it. It is brilliant and it covers like one of the themes that I love in Libby's books is the sense of community that she builds in her books and obviously this is very appropriate for this book as this is about a small island off the coast of Scotland and it's basically about a woman called Lorna who goes back to the island where she grew up. She left there 20 years ago and she goes back for her parents funeral and she, her, her brother is there and she's not spoken to him in like over 20 years. She has a daughter now and it's just kind of about them reconnecting, it's about family and it's about so much stuff. Also it does deal with trauma as well and assault so again trigger warning for that. Um, but this book is so wonderful and I see why people might think it's a bit long winded but I think for me at any rate I don't mind that because I feel like it's very much setting up the story, it's kind of building what is going to happen and I just loved it and Libby's writing is exquisite as always and I love again another thing that Libby does so well is female friendships and the women in this island do welcome Lorna and make her feel so at home in a place that she always wanted to run away from as a teenager and I just love that. There's just a really beautiful moment in here as well in, during a yoga class and I love that so much and I love the relationship between Lorna and her brother's uh, wife as well. Alice, I think that is just a really beautiful connection because it could have gone one of two ways um, and it chose to go like the really beautiful supportive connection which I love. So I adore this book. It's one of my favourite books of the year. Um, I will definitely be rereading it in the future. And I cannot wait for Libby's new book as always to come out. Yes, just absolutely adore this and cannot wait for her new book to come out next year. My next read is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. And this is a book, again, like many on this list that I've been wanting to get to for so long. And I, again, read it a couple of months ago, probably end of summer. And this follows our main character, Simone, who is in high school, I think she's in her maybe last year or second to last year of high school and she is HIV positive and it is basically 
about that and it's about somebody finding out that she's HIV positive and basically blackmailing her um, which is quite interesting and I have heard a few things about this book but I haven't heard many but Simone is a theatre kid so there's a lot of theatre references in this which I know not everybody will get I personally do as a theatre lover myself so I love that aspect and I think Simone is such a great character I love the friendships in this, I love the romance in this and I think the thing that I loved the most was all the information about HIV because I know a little bit about HIV um, but I don't know a lot and this book was so educational when it came to that it talks about what it's like to be a person living with HIV and being a young person living with HIV and about kind of what it's like to be a person in this day and age um, being HIV positive and it was so informal I learned so so much and I definitely want to do more research about it in the future I would love to read some more books about HIV positive people and about AIDS as well um, so yeah I just absolutely adore this book it was such a great read and also there were some great discussions on race as well and racism um, but yes I just adored this book so much such an informal read so if you're looking for books that talk about HIV um, and want to learn more about it I highly recommend this book it is just such a great read a very quick read as well it's not a very long book and I love the family in it as well and like I said the friendships it's just a wonderful book highly recommend. Next up we have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and this was a reread for me it was the third time reading this book and I read this for a live show for my friend Kira's channel she's doing a Jane Austen read-along where basically she reads all of Jane Austen's novels in chronological order um, over the months and I was doing the live show with her for Pride and Prejudice so this read was very interesting for me I read it physically and I it's been a couple of years since I read it I think last time I reread it was in 2018 and I listened to the audiobook for that and I really enjoyed the audiobook but I wanted to read it physically so then I could annotate it which I definitely have and this is a story that I just love so much. It is a story that I have grown up with, like watching the uh, BBC miniseries um, and it's just something that's very close to my heart. So I was very intrigued to kind of go back in reading this for a third time and kind of seeing my opinions on it. And I think because this book and the story in general is so familiar to me, I found it a lot easier to read the book because even though I love Jane Austen so much, I can struggle with the writing a little bit sometimes but I did breeze through this quite quickly actually um, to say it's a classic and I annotated it a lot and I feel like because I've read so many Pride and Prejudice retellings since read last reading this book it's really interesting to go back and read the original works and kind of compare the book like the retellings that I've read to the original story um, I found it so interesting in kind of the different views on the, all of the different characters. I just found that really, really interesting. Um, and it was just such a joy to read and I got the humour a lot more this time. And there's just so many things that I kind of got more the, second, the third time around reading this. Um, but yeah, it was just such a joy to read. And I'm going to also be doing the Persuasion live show with Kira as well which will be in January which will be super fun so I'm very much looking forward to reading that but really really enjoyed my reread of Pride and Prejudice um, and who knows when it, I don't know when I'll next be rereading it, probably be quite a while off but it's definitely a book that I will always return to throughout the years. Next up we have a single thread of Moonlight by Laura Wood and this was again one of my most anticipated releases of the year of course and I have got a reading vlog specifically for this book so I won't talk about it in this video for too long like I said I'll try and remember to leave a link in the description if you want to go and check that video out where I read the entirety of this book but I was very kindly sent a early copy of this book by Laura's publishers which I am so so grateful for and this book is very different compared to Laura's other books. This is set in Victorian England, I think it's Victorian. 
I think it is. It's been, like I said, it's been a little while since I've read this book. I read it back in September. Um, but it's set in Victorian England and it is a kind of Cinderella-esque retelling and it's about our main character Iris who runs away from her home after her father mysteriously dies and she doesn't like her evil stepmother so she runs away to London and several years later she is trying to plot revenge because she believes that her stepmother killed her father and Iris works in a seamstress shop. She's a very good seamstress and she is known for her talent. So one day she meets Nicholas Winters and basically they kind of hatch a plan to take revenge. And they're taking revenge for different reasons but they don't know what the, each other's reasons are for this revenge. And this book is just excellent. Iris Grey is an incredible main character. I think she's one of my new favourite main characters of all time. She's so good. She's very different from Laura's other characters. She's a bit sharper, maybe, I don't know if cold is the right word, but she's a bit grittier. And obviously it's a murder mystery, which is something that Laura's other books are not. But it still has Laura's stunning writing in this. It has a really beautiful story. I had great commentary on feminism and sexuality. There's also ace slash arrow representation in this book, which I'm so happy about. Um, and I actually have it confirmed by Laura. So that just, like I said, brings me so much joy. And it's just one of those books which is just like a really badass feminist revenge like murder mystery story. It is excellent. I loved it so much. It's also 500 pages which is even better. Um, but yeah obviously I adored this book and like I said go and check out the vlog that I did for this book if you kind of want to hear my full thoughts for the whilst I was reading it. Apparently the sun has come out so excuse the lighting for constantly changing in this video. But my next book that I have read is The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner and I read this for the Fall Into Autumn Readathon which I did with my friend Kira from Kira Foster and this is a book that I got, yeah, it got gifted for my birthday earlier this year and it's a book I have seen around, I've heard a few mixed things on it but honestly the reason why I wanted to read this book is because it's compared to Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society which is one of my favourite books of all time and I definitely see the resemblance of this book and honestly this book was such a joy, I loved it so much. So this book kind of jumps around in time a bit, it basically takes place the first bit of it before the or during the Second World War and then it takes place after the Second World War and it follows a bunch of main characters who are living in the village of Chawton which is where Jane Austen kind of lived and resided for most of her life and wrote most of her novels and it's like I said it's basically about the society who are trying to save Jane Austen's original home and make it into a museum for many Austen fans to come and see obviously experience like her life and also to preserve things from her family. I thought that part of the story was going to happen a lot sooner in the novel because this is literally just under or just over, it's literally just over 300 pages. So I thought the society bit would happen sooner, but the first half of the book definitely sets up the characters and introducing them. There's about eight main characters all together in this book and you really get to know them and it makes so much sense, even though the society only really happens, like I said, in the second half of the book. Um, it really makes sense kind of seeing, like getting to know all of these characters and you get to know why they are part of this society and what Jane Austen means to them. And apart from the Jane Austen Society, even though it is sort of the main plot, but it's not, it's very much about our characters and the struggles they are going through. And obviously most of them live in this tiny little village, country village. And then you also have our, a film star, an American film star, who also wants to be part of that. And obviously she is dealing with what it's like to be a female actress in Hollywood during the like post World War II era, which is obviously comes with a lot of difficulties and challenges. Even though there isn't, it's not a long book, you get to know these characters in a lot of detail and you get to know them so well and kind of really understand them and kind of the relationships they have with each other and obviously this is a book about 
these characters and also about Jane Austen but you also get commentary on their opinions about Jane Austen's books so you get discussions that they have between each other about Jane Austen's novels which is fascinating and I really love that and I learned a lot about kind of their opinions on Jane Austen and also the, obviously the author's opinions on kind of Jane Austen's novels and about the characters and the plots and the writing it was like you were part of a book group um, and it was just incredible. I honestly love this as you can see with quite a few of the books in this video I have tabbed it to high heaven and I have also just re found out recently that Natalie Journey is coming out with a another book next year which I think is possibly a companion to this because I think it does include one of the main characters in this in that next book um, so I'll definitely be getting to that next year but absolutely love this book. If you are a Jane Austen fan I think you should definitely read this book. You can read it if you're not a Jane Austen fan but I think you wouldn't get a lot of the discussions that are going around on in this book because I feel like you kind of need to read Jane Austen's works in order to fully appreciate this book but absolutely loved it so if you are a Jane Austen fan I highly highly recommend that you pick this book up. Now I have a couple of graphic novels that I'm going to talk about and I read them on Scribd because I am not up to date with my Goodreads goal. I'm very very behind. I have read maybe 39 books from when I'm filming this video and my goal is 52 so obviously I need to get on it. So I've been reading a few graphic novels um, on Scribd to try and bump that up a little bit. So the first book is kind of, or well, the first two graphic novels should I say, are part of a series that I've just finished um, which is obviously for the Tea Dragon Society. So the first book is the Tea Dragon Festival by Kay O'Neill and I read the Tea Dragon Society last year, really loved it so I wanted to continue with the series and the Tea Dragon Festival is a prequel to the Tea Dragon Society. Um, so it kind of builds a backstory and it does definitely make a lot more sense, especially when you read the final book, which I'll talk about in a minute. But it was really cute, the art style is beautiful. I did enjoy it, but not quite as much as the Tea Dragon Society. And then I also read the Tea Dragon Tapestry, which is the final book in this little trilogy. So it, so like I said, last book and I love this book. This was definitely my favourite out of the two that I read um, over the past month and I loved it. It And you definitely see where the first two books play into a part in the third one, like revisiting all the characters and like I said the art style is beautiful. There is some really lovely representation as well um, for LGBTQ plus representation and I just, it's just such a wonderful read, such a quick read, really heartwarming and definitely a wonderful, wonderful pick me up. And then after that, I read Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker, Wendy Sue, and jo Joamet Gill. Oh god, I'm so sorry. There's three authors on this. And I've seen this around a little bit. I saw Chloe from Books with Chloe. She read it a couple of years ago and really enjoyed it. And this is a cute little graphic novel about a witch and a non-binary werewolf and it's about their romance which is really beautiful but there's also some mysterious thing that's going on in their town and they're trying to figure out what it is um, and it's just really fun um, and there's a lot more to the plot than I thought there was going to be not that I thought there wouldn't be but it was just a really fun read and a great graphic novel and I read this just after Halloween as well so it's kind of like a great like spooky kind of cute but cute Halloweeny read which was really fun and then I also read Fence Volume 1 and 2 by C.S. Packet, which I think is how you pronounce it and again this is quite a popular graphic novel series and it's just a really fun and I want to read more of them but unfortunately they don't seem to have the full versions on script which is really annoying so maybe I can get hold of them at a later date if not I'll have to read the get hold of a physical copy somehow but like I said again a really fun easy to read graphic novel and then I have the final three books so the next one is Run Rebel by Manjeet Man and this is a book I said at the beginning of the year was going to be one of the first books that I wanted to read at the start of 2021 and I only got to it in November I think maybe about November time October November um, 
and this is a novel in verse and it follows our main character Amber and it is about her dealing with her family life, her father who is very controlling and they are living in very um, poor circumstances and it is just about her trying to get through secondary school, trying to achieve her dreams and just there's just a lot about this book and I really want to read this because I've heard great things about it and what I loved about this book is from a writer's perspective I love how Manjeet plays with form in this book novel and you probably can't see very well but there's like obviously there's a lot of blank space but she plays with form a lot more which is really interesting in this novel and she very much concentrates on the emotions and the feelings of the characters and obviously everybody who writes novel in verse writes it very differently my novel in verse that I'm writing is very different to the way that Manji has written this but it's always so interesting and I really love obviously how she has tackled the issues that are going on in this book and I love Amber as a character, like I said she's very imperfect but you really get inside of her head uh, the way Manjeet has written this book. It is definitely a hard hitting read and there are again some trigger warnings for this book so just be aware of those before going into it. But it is an excellent novel and like I said I'm always up for a novel in verse so if you are looking for another novel in verse then maybe check this book out and see what you think. I definitely enjoyed it. And I know that Manji does have a novel, another uh, verse novel that came out earlier this year, I think. So I'll ha definitely have to go and check that out at some point in the future. We are finally onto the last two books. I think I have been filming for a very long time. But the second to last book is How to Be Ace, A Memoir of Growing Up Asexual by Rebecca Burgess. And I have seen this around for a while and I only bought this actually last week from when I'm filming it because there is a new bookshop in the in Manchester, there's two new um, Pride bookshops and I got this from the one in Affleck um, so if you're ever in Manchester go and check them out because they are excellent and I love having some independent queer bookshops in Manchester now, just brings me so much joy. Um, but like I said, this is a graphic novel about Rebecca's personal experience of growing up ace and asexuality is something that I'm always wanting to learn more about um, especially so I love the art style in this and I read this um, not very long ago, maybe a couple of days ago like I said from when I'm filming this and it's really interesting, it starts from when Rebecca is in secondary school right up to when she has a job maybe in her like mid to kind of late-ish 20s um, and it obviously goes through her journey and I did definitely tab some bits in this there were some bits that I really related to and it's just a really insightful glimpse of what it's like to be asexual obviously everybody's experience is different um, and I really related to a lot of the things uh, that Rebecca has gone through. This book is split up into sections, this graphic novel, and at the end of each section there is always a little kind of information bit at the end. So there is a bit at the end of the first bits which is saying what is asexuality and it kind of has tells you the other types of like asexuality because like asexuality is like an umbrella and then there's also di other different types and there's also talking about the difference between sexual attraction and romantic attraction and how kind of they can cross over and it's just some really informal bits in here as well as Rebecca's personal story so I really really enjoyed this book it was really informal um, very hard-hitting at times and it talks about a lot more than just her experience of discovering her sexuality it talks about bullying, it talks about being a graduate and Rebecca's experience with gra graduating and trying to find a job and kind of the anxiety that it comes with that. It also talks about OCD as well which is something that Rebecca also struggles with and therapy and yeah the prob there are a few other trigger warnings which are listed at the front of this. So again like I said be aware of that before going into this book but it was just such 
a wonderful read. It definitely made me think a lot as well after reading it. Um, and it's definitely a book that I will go back to and kind of reread the bits that I have tapped. So really, really enjoyed this book. And if you're looking for more books about asexuality, um, definitely recommend this one. It was just really great, very important, and I really, really enjoyed it. And then the last book on this list is Still Life by Sarah Winman. And I've talked about this book quite a lot on my channel, even though I haven't read it. And it must admit, it took me probably about a month to read this book because I started reading it, then I put it down to read some other books, and then I picked it back up again. And I must admit, I was quite sceptical going into this book because I love Sarah Winman. I don't talk about her as much on my channel anymore, but I love her first two books. And then her last book, Tin Man, I was not a fan of, did not like it, really struggled with it. So I was a little bit apprehensive about going into this, whether I would like it or not. Um, but once I got into this book, it took me a little while to get into it, obviously because I started reading it, then I stopped and then I got back into it again. Um, but once I got back into reading this and started reading it again, I love this book. It is great. It is excellent and like I think everybody should read it. This is a book that's quite hard to explain what it's about because I feel like with Sarah's books you don't really know what you're reading about until you start reading the book. Um, that it is very complex and it takes place over a very long period of time. So it starts during the Second World War where we are introduced to two of our main characters, Evelyn Skinner who is a artist, expert and possible spy and also Ulysses, which I think, Temper, which I think is how you pronounce it, um, who is a British soldier who is fighting in Italy and their paths cross during the Second World War and then after that they part and it will be many many decades later until they are reunited and it is basically about them and their lives and the progression of their lives and what happens to them over the years and most of this book is set in Florence. The very first part is obviously set in Italy and then the next part is set in London and the book mainly follows Ulysses and him growing up obviously coming home after the war and trying to rebuild his life again um, and get back on his feet but the book is about a group of characters. It is about Ulysses and Peg and Cole and Cress and Ali's and this book is just about this misfit bunch of characters which have become a family and it is about their intertwining lives, it is about their friendship, it is about their love, it is about them being a chosen family and it's such, such, a, such a beautiful story. I won't go into too much more description apart from that but like I said it does also take place in Florence and the, I've never been to Florence but the descriptions of Florence in here are beautiful. You can see how much research that Sarah has done into kind of getting to know Florence and the history of Florence and also the art of Florence um, as there is a lot of talk about art in this novel which I personally love. I don't always know a lot of the artists but I really appreciate that as obviously I study photography and I had to study kind of art in general as part of that degree so I really appreciated that and I love kind of the talks about it and it's just stunning, 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 stunning. The characters is really what made this book for me, like I said, like they are so like individual but they are beautiful together and yeah, like I said, I just love their, their aspect of community and chosen family and friendship in this book. It's honestly one, like I said, one of the things I love most about this book. And as always, it has Sarah's stunning writing and I just love this book. It is absolutely incredible. Again, it's one of my favourite books of the year. I'm really glad it wasn't a disappointment because like I said, I was very sceptical, but I adored this book. And if you have not picked up a Sarah Winman book, I highly recommend, if you're looking for a historical fiction, again, I highly recommend, like I said, it starts during the 1940s and this book takes place through to the 1970s. So obviously over quite a few decades, but I will stop gushing, but just know that this book is absolutely incredible. I really, really adored it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Sarah has in store next with us because 
this has restored my love in her even more because like I said it's been a while since I've read one of her books so absolutely stunning if you want a book about like so many different aspects with beautiful stunning characters writing community um you want that vibe of you want a European like Florence historical fiction just it's all in here and so much more uh, I'm gonna stop gushing now because I've been talking about it for long enough but yes I am so glad that this dis did not disappoint me um, and it's definitely a book that I will be rereading in the future. So those are all the books that I have read recently and it looks like I've re been talking for quite a long time to say that I wasn't going to talk for a very long time but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and apologies for the lighting um, it's been very temperamental today so I have been dealing with it as best as I can so I hope you don't mind that but yes, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books and your thoughts on them. And also let me know a book that you have read recently that you have really enjoyed in your thoughts. Because as always, I would love to know. If you guys like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more bookish videos from me, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be noted every time I post a new video. As always, I will leave the links in the description to my social media and my Goodreads if you would like to see my bookish content that you will not find on this channel. But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you so, so much and I will see you again very soon. Bye!